And we're about ready to go live. Here we go. And uh, get this thing started up and get the music going. Hey folks, it's Chasing Truth on uh, the Dark Water Channel over the Paranormal Radio app. Also, Chasing the Truth Sean G on the YouTube channel. It's Wednesday night and I'm live and strapped for open calls night. Let's see who's going on, what's going on over here on the YouTube land. Oh, looky there. we got Christina Bell, Lisa Ray. Merry Christmas to you. Happy Holidays. Happy New Year, Lisa, and thank you, Lisa, Lisa, for the the Christmas gift. I appreciate that. That was a, a amazing. Thank you so much. God bless you and your family. Andy Warhol's wig. What's up, brother? Aaron, appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, it, I guess I probably need to. I didn't say a prayer right before I come online. So hold on just a second, folks. Let me say a prayer. Dear God in heaven, thank you for today. Thank you for the blessings of this show. Thank you for those folks that are a part of this show or will be a part of this show and call in and have a discussion. Keep them safe from everything that is evil, demonic, satanic, extraterrestrial, interdimensional, out for the ruins of the souls of man. Please, dear God, look after those folks that are in need of help emotionally, financially, spiritually. If they're sick, please send your angels a healing to them. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Okay, folks, I believe I'm ready to get this ball a running. Don, Mr. Lurkslock, what's going on? I usually do that prayer right before I go uh, live, but why not do it live anyway? I do a live closing prayer. So there you go. Here we are. 931-994-6917 is the place to call if you want to call in and give us a, a story or whatever or you just want to say howdy do i'm from so and so place just listening to you i'd like to chime in or whatever hey james what's up did you see that live stream uh let's see christmas eve was it christmas eve yeah christmas eve over on dark waters channel hmm Medium dark roast. Would you believe that's on my only my second cup of coffee? Well, wait a minute. Third cup of coffee today. I'm usually a, a pod into it all by now, but uh, there you go. Crazy. So we've got 13 viewers, 17 now. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, if you want to support the channel, hit those thumbs up and share it out. Subscribe if you love it. Over on Chasing True Sean G, if you're listening to me over on the Paranormal Radio app. But uh, holy cow, Big Cole, what's going on? Everybody hearing me okay? Audio doing all right? Just to make sure it looks like, uh, let me go over here. Yep, looks like I'm uh, getting out there. Can you hear me okay though? That's what. That's my biggest thing right now. I've done like 10, 15 minutes, and I didn't know that uh, my audio is actually doing anything at all. Crazy as it is, but that's the stuff that goes on in my head here lately. I hope you had a fantastic Christmas. All right, here's here's something for you guys. <laughs> I get a call from my sister. Uh, her grandson, which I've talked about on my show a couple of times, he's a... Little fellow, about five years old or so, in kindergarten. Apparently, he's having issues here and there. And he had a, a escort from his teacher to the car where my sister and my niece were waiting for him. Yeah, cool. And uh, you just have to know this little fellow. He's just one of those... One of those cr <laughs> Actually, I call him a little punk. Because he's just a... You know, that's the way he is, but he's funny as heck. Oh, get out. Hey, Bass, what's going on? Well, anyway, uh, my niece, his mother, and the teacher has a little discussion about my little grandnephew. And then, uh, of course, 
you know, as they pull off by themselves with my sister, my niece, and uh, my grandnephew, you hear this little voice, or my sister said, and you hear this little voice say, she's dog water, D-O-G-W-A-T-E-R, a five-year-old this dog water. <laughs> Holy cow, folks, all I can tell you is what in the heck's going on here? And let's see. Looks like that. Oh, there we go. Looks like a whole bunch of stuff is over. I checked on the Vault 1. Crazy. Hey, yeah, bat. You have to go over there. The Was it last night? On uh, Vault's channel. The Twins, Bass, and uh, Truth uh, made this incredible... Uh, Vault of Nightmares, uh, bust, incredible, crazy, but uh, yeah, there we open that up with a crazy story. Hey, Sean Hawk, what's going on tonight? Nine three one nine nine four six nine one seven is the place to call if you want to share your share your encounters or your story or just say how to do. I'm listening to you. On XYZ, which I'm only out on two places right now, the Paranormal Radio app and the Dark Waters channel, and over on uh, YouTube, my channel, Chasing True Sean G. But uh, holy cow. Hope you had a great day. All right, here. Oh. Michael, if you want to call back in, I didn't quite, wasn't able to grab that call real quick. Michael Owens there. I was trying to, but uh, he was a little too quick on uh, the hang up on there. Or uh, if you, if you, I didn't try to hang up on you though. Honestly, this old computer's trying to. It's been doing this thing. I did a uh, some maintenance on my Mac Mini, a 2017 Mac, or not 2017, 2011 Mac Mini from 2011, and the old son of a gun is still going at it, man. Noe, what's going on? Uh, it says, been listening to DW Dogman stories while I sleep and get awesome scary dreams. I really recommend it. I'm not exactly sure if I want scary dreams. Give me just a second. We got a caller. And give me just a second, Michael. We'll get you on the air here. Hey, Michael, what's going on? Oh, I was, honestly, I was still asleep. I was letting myself wake up. But it, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me turn the air off and everything. Yeah, you got a little bit oh. of noise in the background there. So okay. how was your Christmas there, buddy? Oh, Sean, you don't want to know. Uh, it, um, yeah, sure it is. In my entire 45 years of life, I've had three Christmases. Mm-hmm. And one of them I got a... Uh, thing of Stetson cologne, the other one I got a, a case of socks, and the other one I got some freaking deodorant. So, um, yeah. <laughs> that, that's about how I feel about Christmas, but that, uh, you know, I'm not going to stir that for anybody, anybody else. Well, I'm not big on the retail part of it. You know, uh, Christmas is, um, to me, it's about family, and it's just one of those things. If you, if you want to know what I got for Christmas, I got a $2.50 uh, Christmas tree. That was about two, uh, maybe two feet tall, something like that. Oh, my. My aunt gave me, because I didn't put up a Christmas tree, and she just wanted to make sure I had a Christmas tree this year. And she uh, put that on my, uh, actually, dining room table. And I was like, holy cow, thank you. That was the that was my cr one and only Christmas gift. Other than the uh, fine folks, Lisa gave me a Christmas gift, and I think Razor gave me a Christmas gift. Uh, Razor Wolf in the chat and stuff. A couple of people, and uh, definitely thank them for that. That was uh, amazing, you know, that kind of support. But if you want to support the channel, just hit that thumbs up. Yeah, or thumbs whenever, down, it all works, it all works. Whenever you got friends like that, it's good. I mean, it's real yeah. good. Um, yeah, but... <laughs> I didn't even know what I was going to talk about whenever I came on today. That's why I hung back up. Um, Did you but, I got one question? Did you hear my little story about my grandnephew that I told? Um, just the last five seconds of it. Okay. Well, my little grandnephew, five years old in kindergarten, he 
uh, apparently is having some issues, uh, you know, behaving himself. And the well, teacher it, walked him out to the car with my uh, sister, which is his grandmother, and uh, my niece, which is his mother, and they had a little chat about uh, my grandnephew's, uh, you know, how he uh, chooses to uh, act out in class. And uh, here was the disc that he, you know, begrudgingly, or I guess he aggressively <laughs> sat in the car as they were leaving. She's nothing but dog water. D O G W A T E R. Oh my gosh. Dog water. Five year old dog water. Uh, like, that is the best diss ever. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, was she the girl with, you know, picking up quarters uh, on, on extra time and uh, recess? <laughs> I mean, I remember I there honestly, was one of those know. there. I honestly do not know other than, uh, holy cow, can you come up with a better, you know, that's the best. In- any four-letter word couldn't compare it to the dog water. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. No, I was I was sitting there in my um, and I was in the realms, um, the dream realms, and, and um, right before I woke up, I was about to get reinducted in the guild, um, which is about the coolest people along the planet there are, but um. I don't know. There ain't too many people that know anything about the realm, so. Oh. <laughs> oh wow. Well, one of my buddies over in the Discord chat, Happy Hour. He is uh, about ready to leave Chile. He's out of there tomorrow. He's been fussing about getting out of that uh, country for man, well over a year now. Wow. Chile? Really? Chile. Yeah. I mean, Chile's not a bad place. I mean, that's. Well, the, yeah. they've got a bunch of, you know, the the fun in-house parties that we've been going through for two years here. Uh, worldwide, Chile's uh, uh, exponentially had a better, uh, I guess, hold on that, keeping you indoors and having those house parties and making sure that you're having a house party. That's oh, the best they're I making them with. have it. Yeah, they're making it, you know, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, what, that's what kind of, cool. what kind of good uh, good stuff has been happening with you lately? Oh, shoot. Well, my dog's happy. Um, <laughs> um they're fixing up all our checks, but you know, that's yours too, so. Oh, okay. Um, at least that's what I heard. I heard we're going to get 5.9%. Um, oh, here's starting in a couple days, but, you know, uh, don't, I'm not exactly sure. I did see where the United States is now in the tax code. Now, you, folks, you can look this up. That if you stole property and did not return it within one year, you have to list it as income. That is such a smart idea. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I stole, <laughs> uh, I stole this Porsche. And, uh, yeah, I want to list this as income. Yeah, I'm sure that will happen. <laughs> well, I don't no, think I'm not, that I you know, Look that up, folks. I, you know, make sure, um, you know, make sure I'm telling the truth. If I'm not, uh, let me know about it. Look up that new tax code. Well, I mean, the real thief's going to take it to the chop shop anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> oh, but, yeah, um... No, I didn't. I didn't even know you had caught me cal- calling. I was just testing the number. Um, oh, wow. there you go. But yeah, um, I've had things my, are okay. I've, things I've are had okay my Skype for me. turned off for the last couple of days. Just you know, taking a break from everything and anything. But you know, doesn't it doesn't hurt to you know disconnect every once in a while. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, what do you think about the new plans that? Uh, Lakea has to get on our channel and get it. She said she was going to be focusing on it the last time that uh, she was on the live stream. And, yeah, I uh, think that's wonderful. I, I, I think that's an awesome idea. Yeah, she does a fantastic job. I'll, I'll definitely support as much as I can. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did 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 you get to hear that uh, redo of the werewolf story? I heard bits and pieces of it and, uh, uh, that you did on her channel. 
you know, that little recording. I was like, I, I recognize that one. Yeah, it's the same one. It's just told a different. It's told a different uh, with different stresses. Okay. Right. Um, Have you come across these werewolves since? Oh, <laughs> not that one. Um, I could tell anybody where the dogmen are, though. They're just right across the way from that where that happened. But um, the difference is, is that they're um, mostly all variant one canids. Mm-hmm. I mean that that was the difference. Is this was a variant three that happened on that night, and it was. You'll have to feather in the, the variant. Okay, I'm not, um, the, I'm not that. I'm variant, not that up on it. Variant variant one canids have a dog-like chest as well, as well as the dog-like legs, and they they tend to have longer, skinnier arms and kind of fold their wrist a little bit like dogs. Okay. Um. The variant three looks like Van Helsing's Superman werewolf. Oh, okay. That's the difference. And I mean, sheesh! Back then, whenever I could see, sheesh, I was scared crapless to go up against a, a one variant three Van Helsing Superman freaking werewolf. But I wouldn't those, have a. I wouldn't have a clue. I would probably shit my pants and then uh, pass out if I was faced with something like that. Yeah, but that, I mean, before that had happened, I mean, I, <laughs> I had already had contact and you know trouble with the regular dogmen with the variant ones. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'd had contact with them for years. Going back and forth and just looking and doing stuff and messing with stuff and they ki- you know killed my chickens and all all, the, all kinds of stuff. But they, uh, I mean, they ain't they're nothing compared to that variant three. <laughs> okay, we got one question in the chat. What's a variant two? Oh, uh, I don't know. I thought it. I always thought it was one of them ones with the fuzzy little mouths. But I, I don't. Uh, I'm I'm not sure. Well, I'm ignorant on the on the classifications, the Bigfoot classifications and the dog classifications. I know, classifications. I know the four. I know the four is the big head, and the three is the Van Helsing. I don't know what the two is. I've never seen one. Oh, okay. So, and being blind, I won't see one. <laughs> if I become bait for one, that's a different story. But. <laughs> I know. So, uh, what are you going to be doing for New Year's there, buddy? Um, shoot. Well, if I can convince Steve to take me out to Ennis, I'm getting me some fireworks. But uh, Okay, so you just like to feel the fireworks go off since, uh, you know, I'm just... You know, oh, no, I'm getting artillery shells, the big boom booms. Well, that uh, little boom boom... Thing that we had Christmas Eve over on Dogman Cams on Dark Waters Channel, they paid like a hundred bucks for that little short show there. I know, I know that they got one of those uh, one of those kits that all comes together apparently. Well, at least that's what it looked like to me. Was whenever I was listening to, it, I was like, yeah, there's the there's the butterflies, there's the there's the hornets, there's the you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, the big the big fireworks was happening afterwards. You know, there yeah, there was an intruder on his property, which you know I don't know why in the world somebody be so stupid to get on Vault's no, property. They're, they're idiots. I mean, he clearly he clearly said he's got mortar rounds. I mean, uh, not mortars, but claymores uh, in places. He's, they're he's idiots. Got some, but... He's got some deterrence over there for him. But, uh, yeah. And then there was uh, some uh, boom booms out in the distance uh, coming from lead injectors. Uh, I I heard it. I heard all of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah, sure he did. But I'm like, why in the world would they pick Christmas Eve to do that? They're just, they're plain idiots. They're they are just idiots. That, they need to get dunked in the river by Sasquatch. Oh, there's Bigfoot Anonymous. Hey there, what's going on, brother? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, honestly, I just, uh, Saturday, was it Saturday night? I can't, uh, whatever Christmas Eve fell on, I think it was Saturday night, or was this pretty close? Well, anyway, whatever Christmas Eve was, that was an interesting 
live feed. Uh, I honestly, uh, <laughs> you know, if you sit there and think, well, that was just a big production, no, it wasn't. It wasn't like anything. Uh, you know, we didn't talk about what was going on other than, hey, I got a few fireworks to pop off, and, <laughs> and that's it. The rest of it was definitely unscripted. <laughs> yeah, I, I I understand that. Wow. Oh, goodness. Well, honestly, uh, I, I just woke up out of the realms, and I've been there for days. Um, oh, really? Yeah, because time works different there. Um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> whenever I was punching in the buttons, I was I was still asleep. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Um, now, if you got questions, I'm right here. But um. Well, uh, the weird thing is, here lately, you know, the activity in my house has went down dramatically. Now, today, I saw what I thought was a shadow figure, and then I kind of went, nah, maybe not. Uh, well, have you seen an uptick in this kind of stuff? Actually, I've seen a downtick in it since we last spoke. Oh, okay. I mean... Um, a couple of days ago, there was there was one that came in and uh, uh, actually had a, a visitor from the other side, the uh, uh, a celestial, an angel, uh, and uh, he did what he was supposed to do. He sat there and manifested and and presented himself as an angel, and I didn't, you know, blow any of his feathers off. Uh, well, that. You know, a, a while back that kind of did happen. Um, when we I'm had getting... this, this we had this discussion, which you know I'm blind in my left eye, and you're 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 totally blind. But uh, you know, I see occasionally you know things out of my left eye. My right eye has no clue what it, what it's seeing. Exactly. You so, have to close your right eye off. All right. Yeah, you got to close that off. It's like it's like um, <laughs> me being blind and still closing my right eye because I mean I, I that right eye just doesn't work very well. But I still close it. Nickel says it's interdimensional shadow figures. I'm not exactly sure. You you know it's like uh, uh, well it it that's what I was telling you it was in the first place is a, is an ethereal vampire. That's an inter interdimensional shadow figure. Yep. Yeah. True enough. True enough. Yeah. I honestly, I don't know. I've seen shadow figures all over the freaking place. Hey, there's well, Brian Bowden. You got, hey, buddy. You got you got your ethereal vampires, which are blobs. Then you have your top hat man, and then you have your freaking uh, shadow dog man that looks like a dog man, but it, it causes sleep paralysis. Then you got, <laughs> there are a lot of them. I mean. They really are. Then you got to your uh, ethereal fish, filter, and they're just going to open up a little thing through the ether and move stuff around like paranormal activity, and you're going to be like, "What the hell?" <laughs> and and they're and they're stealing your stuff. Yeah. Well, I, uh, hmm. I've had issues with stuff being misplaced around the house, and you kind of wonder, "Well, I was just sitting here. Where the hell did it go?" Yeah. You know, it didn't move anywhere. But yeah, I mean, that's just. That's just the few that, you know, I know right off the top of my head, you know. I mean, <laughs> the rest of the ones in there, that they really don't like us and don't mess with us. <sighs> but, I mean, you, there there are probably four or five different other things that I've seen in the, in the ether, but it, that's the ones that you really, you know, see around your house. So are all these uh, different shadow people that you know the hat man and the uh, you know the shadow dog creatures and the you know the short little stumpy uh, Oh gosh. Shadow, are they all about the same or are they related or what? They're not related at all. Okay. The uh, the dog like one is a demon. The mm -hmm. ethereal vampire is well it's an ethereal vampire. It, it's actually from a different plane of existence. Um, the top hat man, um, I couldn't tell you where he comes from, but, um, 
they like to make deals. They like to talk. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. I think it's just an old creature that's trying to get a lot of attention. That's what I thought right. uh, whenever I had to deal with him. Uh, now, the you were re- mentioning the littler ones. Are you talking about the red caps or the... Uh, well, uh, you, well, I've told you about the one that uh, I was in this bedroom where I am, where I've got my you know, uh, makeshift studio. I was woke up one one morning. Oh, and, they were trying to take you? No, they weren't taking me. You know, I, w- I woke up, and I got up on my elbows, looked over in the corner, and there stood this four-foot-odd-inch uh, thing standing there and i said well i'm gonna figure out if i can stick a broomstick up your ass and the thing oh takes yeah off. yeah that's that's automatic yeah you know i said that out loud and that thing took off i didn't hear it i don't know how the hell it got through uh got in because the door was locked to come in and the door was locked to go out but did that look like a blob or did it look like um an actual creature it looked like a it looked like a short stubby uh person maybe where and you know, where and were they, were they on the ground or were they floating? Mm, what I remember of it, it was on the ground. Okay. That is one big gnome-looking thing. You said he was, you know, stocky, stubby, and short, right? All right. Yeah. Classify, you know, it would fit the classification for gnome or dwarf, right? Mm-hmm. About a yeah. month ago. That's weird. That shouldn't have come over like that. Apologize, folks, for that blasting you. I guess there's a new update on the Skype there, but I apologize. Uh, I saw one about a a month and a half, two months ago, and there was a lot of chaos going on in my life at that time. You're you're lucky that you only see in one of them. They usually come in three or fours. Well, this one was standing in my dining room. And this one, I'm still compu- uh, uh, debating whether or not this thing had a hat on. And it was about five foot something. It, it looked like a stocky, uh, arched over, you know, you know arched back uh, how, woman standing how, there. Uh, an arched back what? Woman standing there. Hmm. Uh, Warhol wig, Warhol's wig, Andy Warhol's wig says, ask Michael if the Greys aliens are vulnerable to psychic attack. Um, the actual Greys, um, at least the ones that tried to screw with me, um, they are more mentally powerful than I am. Okay. Um, they... Really don't like electricity, though. Hmm. Why is that? How do how do you know that, and how do you put that to practical use? Because they were dominating me, and the only thing that I could do about it was tump something over that had liquid uh, onto an open electrical line and fry that sucker. Hmm. Okay. But yeah, they're um, they can mess you up mentally. Honestly, they 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 can really. Mess but you are up. they? Uh, but are they uh, prone to being psychically attacked themselves? Can you psychically attack? Um, uh, uh, I could. Great. I could. Okay. okay. Um, I don't know if I would be successful at it. I do not know. You're talking about a race of beings that are so used to getting their way. It's not funny. You know, they they've got willpower that's just as strong as mine or stronger because it it uh, <laughs> I mean that's what they do. You know, they 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 seriously try to run stuff. Now, uh, from you know, a couple of discussions I've had over the last few years, these little gray aliens, you know, I know there's taller grays and slim grays and then you got the, you know, the praying mattis looking things. But yeah. these short grays apparently are, you know, dumbass, He's you know, dumbass uh, you know, automatons that, uh, you know, have one skill you're set. Talking that's about all the, they're doing. You're talking about the foot and a half tall ones, right? Yeah, the little short fellas. Yeah, those are, <laughs> they're the ones they put in the dang suits whenever they're ready to attack 
you know, whole worlds full of people. Oh, okay. Yeah, but we don't know about that. But yeah, um, if if you want a lot of little inside baseball, um, check out Independence Day. There ain't too much of it. This, I mean, there's a lot of there that really they just let us see and. Well, I think pop culture, you know, kind of you know, does a, le- a little bit of leaking of truth out and, you know, vaguely veils it as science fiction or fiction or whatever. Yeah, that, there's there's a lot more there that's real than what you... I mean, there's a lot of fake movie stuff there, you know, but <laughs> there's a lot of little details and, inconsi- you know, little in- intricacies that, that really... That, that, it's real. And I mean, I, on, I don't like talking about the Grays. They've wiped large sections of my mind away to where I don't remember that stuff no more. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I really don't like it. But <laughs> but any more questions? <laughs> I think it's about it. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, they, uh, they 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 mess me up. All right. Well, Mike, I appreciate you calling in. As usual, you always got a fascinating conversation that I've had with you in the past, and it always changes. You never know what you're going to get when you answer a call from Michael Owens. That's sure. <laughs> I wish y'all had people in the chat that have been in the realms. You know, I mean, just the. Well, you never know. Uh, there might I'm be. I'm not talking about in the dreams. I'm just, I'm talking about real in the real dream realms. And and actually been there and know people and I mean, gosh, I might have met you if you have been. Um, You're talking like that Matrix Zero or whatever it was that they did in uh, uh, Star Trek. Um, I don't know. I didn't uh, see that. They one. went into a uh, all the Borg went into this one collective. They had their own collective that they met up in. Uh, and were them, their cells, and then when they went back into the, uh, woke up from their sleep cycle, they woke up into, you know, being their own little drones. But during that entire what? time. What? Yeah, Matrix, I think it was Matrix Zero, or what, I can't remember what it was called. you got to understand, I've been blind for a decade, <laughs> Sean. I'm... Well, I, okay, there you go. Well. <laughs> I ain't seen it. <laughs> well, uh, it's out there, I think. Voyager is the uh, the Star Trek series it was on. Huh. I remember the Borg. I remember them coming all the way to Earth, but I, I don't. I didn't remember that. Hmm. Oh man. Well, there you go. I forgot what it was. A Matrix something zero, Unicron zero, or whatever. No, Unicron's a whatever is going around now. But uh, <laughs> some kind of new new Decepticon. <laughs> some kind of new Decepticon. <laughs> No, I'm, uh, uh, Jay Jones wants you to explain what the realms are. Okay, that I can do. The realms are different areas in the in dreams that a collective of people around the world have uh, individually and wholly uh, accepted as real, as as a place that they can go, feel safe. And do things that they can't do here in this, you know, mm-hmm. so-called reality. Um, it sure isn't an actuality, uh, but uh, they—you can go there. You can do things. You can sit there and put your hand out and think of what you want and make it appear in your hand. Um, so, in that sense, it's sort of like, well, you can't do that in dreams either. But uh, I know of five different realms, and um, each one of them are pretty much static. I mean, they'll move, they'll they'll change with things that people make and build there. Like, I mean, mines came out, mines, uh, Minecraft came out. How long ago? Mm, it's one game I didn't really play a lot of. I think I may well, have spent I, I've, maybe thirty I've minutes on never, it. And said, nah, I have I can't. never played it. I just I've I've sit there and experienced the uh, the continuity of it, and it, it's 
seems to be, you know, a made up block block type version of the realms, you know, mm-hmm. and and it didn't come out. I mean, the realms have been around my whole gosh. I, I've been going there since I was a you know young teenager. Well, when I was growing up, I, you know, I experienced a lot of vivid dreams that, you know, to a certain yeah, point, they, I kind of wonder, I kind of wondered if I was uh, leading a separate life there. There you go. So that's what the realms if, are. That, you were in the realms, if you got to thinking that, yeah. If you can sit there and think of something and create it right there in your hand, you're in the realms. If... <laughs> If you get the dream and you think, why is my dream lasting for days? <laughs> uh, yeah, you might be in the realms. Um, <laughs> but uh, there's uh, there's one that just about everybody has been into. It's called the grid. Um, if you see it from outside, it looks like a big box. Uh, not a box box, but a box of pipes. And those pipes are all tunnels that people are, they're full of tunnels and full of people in in all tunnels. And and everybody's doing everything. You have to really look around to find who you're looking for. But just about everybody is there. I mean, um, if they're not there today, they might be there tomorrow or next week. Um, But that's the the grid. Um, The one that I was at, before I got here was the guild and it's basically a large factory warehouse that um, the best uh, the best thieves con men uh, manufacturer of, any, of anything anything and uh, you know all the slum people in life they have an opportunity to go there and be a part of the guild, but if you're a part of the guild, you have to follow three rules. Mm -hmm. No lying, no cheating, no stealing from anybody in the guild. Jay Jones says, I know what he means. I've seen a guy that teaches how to get in it. He called it the phase. Mm Mm-hmm. But it's it's it is a place that is real to us that have made it. We we walked it, we've seen it. Um, <laughs> you can't buy it from us. You can't take it from us. Uh, <laughs> hmm. But yeah, it, it the realms are real. Uh, I've I don't know how many there are. I've only been to five. Um, there's, uh, Wild West Town, um, there's the Carnival, uh, and the Carnival's a very, very dangerous place. You ever find yourself at the Carnival, be careful. It is just... Well, you're talking, a, you're talking a foreign language to me. I have no clue what you're talking about. Um, okay, that shadow creature that you found in your house? Which one? <laughs> exactly. Uh, there are thousands of them at the carnival, and they're all trying to rip you off and get you in a corner and steal your energy. Yeah. No. Now, in the in the Badlands, um, there are there are dogmen, werewolves, vampires, uh, everything you find here that I didn't think you could find here. And over my lifetime, I found that they're here too. Um. But so I mean, is this, uh, uh, these realms, can you meditate to get there, or do you have to be asleep to get there? Um, you can start out meditating and get there, mm-hmm. but eventually you're going to fall asleep. You better, you better be in a comfortable position, because when you wake up, you might have a really bad cramp. Mm, well, I wake up with a bunch of cramps from the, oh, <laughs> God. I get these uh, hideous foot cramps at night, but uh, I don't think that's because of a dream. Well, all I can say is if if you get into the realms and you realize that you're in the realms, and that's two of the main things, if you can create something from your own imagination in your hand, 
and you feel like you've been there way too long. You you're probably in the realms. Um, it, it's not a real, it's not a regular dream. You're not sit there set by you know uh, this certain pattern that you did in the dream. Uh, you can walk around, do whatever you want. You can live there. Oh man. Um, <clears throat> if if you find yourself there, um, I'm. I'm the seven foot tall jaguar that has a duster on and walks around on two legs. Yeah. Um. <laughs> that sounds like Avatar to me, or some sort of you know. Well, that's that's my Did spirit you? creature. So I just I happen to shift into that look whenever I go there. Hey, Michael, let me uh, take this other caller, and I'll talk to you later, brother. How's that? It. Take it right. easy there. See ya. Okay, on screen caller, you're live on the air. What's your name and where you from? Yeah, is this Sean? Am I just live already? You are live already. Hey, uh, my name is Jordan, and I am from Murfreesboro, Illinois. Murfreesboro, Illinois. I know Murfreesboro, uh, Tennessee. Been there many times. Not a, I never knew yeah. there was one in Illinois. Oh, there sure is. And, um, yeah, I mean, I've, um, only lived here for a few years now. I moved here from the St. Louis area a few years back. Hmm. It's kind of, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a Southern part of Illinois that's actually known as little Egypt. Um, there are a bunch of towns around here, like called Cairo that have, uh, sort of Egyptian influence for some reason or another. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. <clears throat> Anywho, yeah, um, not super related to my story or anything, but uh, so I've got a story that I've essentially uh, shared amongst friends and whatnot, mm-hmm. and um, I used to... Uh, Uh, whenever this story first happened, I very excitedly shared it with other people because I thought that because they knew me, they would believe me. And I quickly found out, uh, how few people believe you when something extraordinary does happen to you. Mm -hmm. So it kind of, uh, turned my life on its head at that point. But, uh, so anywho, in, uh, the summer of, 2017 I uh living in southern Illinois uh you know it's home to the Shawnee forest it's kind of where the Ozarks meet the farmlands of the prairie you know all right and um you know uh I had a family member who had just moved out uh probably 12 miles uh into the country from the nearest town and uh this family member who never uh talked to me about any of this beforehand called me uh excitedly telling me that he thought that there was a a family of bigfoot that were crossing through his property his uh girlfriend i guess had seen one and they had it's it was a trailer that's kind of in the middle of nowhere and they were going through a period of having the sides of their trailer slapped in the middle of the night and even to the point of leaving big muddy handprints Hmm. on the sides of the trailers uh and this, this family member, I, I, I'd known him my whole life, you know, and he had contacted me because when I was younger, I had always had kind of a superficial interest. I grew up in a really small town in Southern Illinois. So, uh, you know, you kind of look for things to do. And he got a hold of me because of that. And so me being the curious person I am, I went out and camped on his property that night as soon as he told me about it. And that night, um, 
I had gone out actually by myself because no one else was available. He has a crazy work schedule and I was just too impatient to wait for anyone else. But, uh, I went out that night and overnight, uh, I heard in the distance some uh, pretty strange sounds. And I mean, I've camped, uh, in this, area my whole life that they, they were sounds that were unusual to me that I even got a few uh recordings of and after that night I was so excited uh that I went to my longtime girlfriend and my cousin and I showed them the recordings and the very next night I took them out to the spot to go camping with me Mhm. Okay. That night ended up kind of changing my whole life because that night uh we were kind of harassed uh by multiple entities that I have a hard time even reconciling as what people think of when we talk about Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. uh, it was kind of a situation where also I was told Bigfoot and I brought out uh, people who I cared about because I thought it was Bigfoot. But the whole night we kind of found out how vulnerable we really were to something that's not necessarily a relict ape or hominid, but maybe something that it intelligently avoids people. Okay. Uh, and well, a um, couple of quick questions, you know, usually I ask when people encounter these things, did you smell anything off about it? No. Not particularly. Um, this, uh, so, uh, we, uh, before my cousin had even talked to me, he had actually had the, uh, two different local BFRO, um, investigators out there. They had kind of talked to him about signs that they had seen. And I think one of them even managed to pick up some pretty interesting field recordings. Um, but uh, to to kind of explain how this also felt different. So uh, because I was so excited about the first night when my cousin, my girlfriend, and his Rottweiler were all with us. And when we decided to go out, we just wanted to experience whatever. And none of us brought phones or recording devices of any kind, mm -hmm. um, just because we were trying to uh, have a full on experience. Uh, before this experience, too, I'd like to clarify, I was a pretty staunch skeptic and I would even at this point in my life, say kind of a cynical atheist. Um, and if I did ever think of Bigfoot, it was kind of a Pacific Northwest, uh, you know, Harry and the Hendersons sort of deal. Whenever we went out, the, the, the reason I say I have a hard time reconciling this is we started hearing noises surrounding us uh pretty quick into the night uh i have some of these recordings on my phones uh that they got really close to us and as they were getting closer to us uh we all started being hit by waves of nausea and kind of a uh, humming in our heads that I can, I mean, uh, only describe as some sort of, you know, um, hallucinogenic sort of humming. 
Um, and there were points throughout the night where we would all be trying to focus on the noises we were hearing around us. And we would start getting so nauseous that we would be brought to our knees. And then something on two legs would sprint really close to our camp and make us all, we would all jump up and be hit with a rush of adrenaline and be standing up essentially on top of our campfire within moments of being on our knees and everyone feeling nauseous. Uh, I've talked to other Bigfoot so, investigators about this. I've not really ever heard anything like this. These other folks that was in that uh, party, uh, once they got nauseated, what did they think was uh, causing the nausea? Or did you uh, come to the same conclusion? Well, uh, it was kind of happening um, to all of us. And I mean, it was the sort of thing that we weren't really discussing it as it was happening because there were obvious physical presences around us in the tree line. Mm -hmm. We were, I guess, trying to remain alert and I and I and we had a Rottweiler with us as well as kind of our only uh, illusion of protection, I guess, you know, mm-hmm. um, and uh, it was the kind of thing that um, after the event in everything to. Uh, my family member who lives out there, uh, who was raised, uh, very religious, I won't mention the denomination, but he, uh, was thinking that, uh, these things had some sort of religious relevance because of, uh, the way that, uh, I guess they were making us feel and, um, whatever those beings were trying to communicate in that night. I don't know. Uh, at the time it felt really dangerous also, but after the event, it's like, uh, we all made it out alive. It was, uh, really scary, but, um, nothing ever happened. So were they really even trying to cause harm? You Mm -hmm. know, I don't know. Don't know. Uh, Did they growl or make any kind of, you know, well, I keep hearing stories about being hit with infrasound. It makes, you know, either makes you hypnotic in a hypnotic state or something uh, like that. Did that, uh, was that even part of the story? Yeah. I mean, I have, so uh, I, at the time had no uh, frame of reference for this kind of activity. Like I said, I thought Bigfoot was going to be some sort of fun lost ape or something. And um, it wasn't until after this experience that I uh, came across kind of the more out there theories of uh, infrasound and uh, what they call zapping. And, um, the uh the family member of mine uh became uh pretty into like the writings of a Kawani Lasperitis who kind of talks about Bigfoot in a spiritual sense, but it always kind of gave me the willies because of its uh kind of culty connotations. All right. <sighs> So uh, when's the uh, last time you had any kind of interaction with these things? or you know, Do you see them passing as you're driving through these areas where you've uh, encountered these things? Do you see them as you're driving through the areas or yeah, anything like no, that? No. Uh, so there was a uh, th- that brief period of interaction 
And uh, funny enough, there was a property dispute between my family member and a neighbor, which resulted in uh, a bulldozing of a tree line. And so nothing has really happened since that year, 2017. In the years since, I've tried to do my own research and kind of recalibrate uh, my reality. I've gone to a lot of conventions and talked uh, to a lot of folks who believe in kind of the physical aspect and others who, you know, believe in all sorts of things uh, with sort of religious connotations. I don't really know what to think one way or the other. I just uh, am trying to reconcile the experience that we had out there. Hmm. Um, Have you had a discussion with uh, some of your friends that had these encounters along with you? Did you um, wind... um... Uh, have any discrepancies or disagreements with uh, what they saw versus what you saw? Well, so most of the discrepancies that have come up, I think, uh, over, over the last few years, I've networked a lot and talked with other people with experiences. And the biggest thing that strikes me is a lot of people experience similar things, but they interpret it in different ways because of their background or maybe uh, their religious upbringing, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, so, for example, um, the, uh, the three of uh, us peop- uh, who were out there were raised, uh, one's Jehovah's Witness, one was raised Mormon and one was Catholic. And uh, the biggest discrepancies are that um, when I was talking to the other people who were with me, they were kind of having religious awakening affiliation uh, with whatever we encountered and interpreting it to kind of the things they were raised with. Hmm. So, well, so they're, I they're, mean, their base belief systems, you know, you know, change their interpretation around versus what yours was mm-hmm. versus what you, you know, from person to person. Yeah. Okay. And, and for example, in the years since, like I said, I've networked with other people who have had encounters in the last uh, year or so, I was talking to some people who live out in the Shawnee Forest in southern Illinois who have been having a series of encounters. When I went out and talked to them, um, they were obviously, you know, like kind of southern Illinois, deeply religious farming people, you know, and they kind of had uh, religious thoughts on the presence of these things. Mm -hmm. And they talked to me about a neighbor of theirs who had had uh, a bunch of encounters of their own. Well, when I went out and talked to this person, this person was a college professor who uh, was living out there. And, you know, uh, she pretty much told me that they were seeing the same things, but the way they both described them to me, despite just being neighbors and essentially seeing the same thing was really different. And I think a part of that comes with when you finally see something that kind of changes the way that most people are told the world is, you know, you try to look back to what you've been taught to find an explanation. But the bottom line is that uh, people are seeing the same thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm. That's interesting. You, so I'm, I'm kind of wanting, now that we're having this discussion about, you know, base beliefs, you know, depending on how you grew up, you know, I'm not picking one, one particular religious sect or, you know, non-religious person or whatever. 
So you know, well, just, I'm not, where they come from and where they grew up. I'm just in general, just in general. Yeah. Where they come up, maybe mm-hmm. where they grew up, and where they, uh, you know, basically how they grew up and how they saw world the world uh, through their parents' eyes, whoever they grew up with, that was their father or mother figure or whatever. You know, he had the same experience. So, you you know, we had a Bigfoot experience, you and I. You know, say I was a non-secular, didn't believe in God or anything like that. And I said, nope, I, that was figment of my imagination. You know, I had a little too much coffee or whatever. Or it's a lost primate or some mm-hmm. sort of evolutionary uh-huh. thing where a religious person may see the same thing and they go, Oh, that's a descendant of Cain, or that's a beast of the apocalypse. I've heard it all I, as far as my last three or four years of really networking with people. Mm-hmm. And the, the thing is, uh, with some of these bigger Bigfoot organizations, I've gone out and done research in the years since, but all researchers are kind of their own worst enemies, either from, you know, their unperceived bias or uh, the tendency to a lot of people want to be the one that publishes the big proving document that something exists. So there's not a lot of real communication within the researcher community. Mm-hmm. Just, just, just as a layman, uh, from the outside looking in, you know, like I said, I've, I had an experience and ever since that experience for the last few years, I've been digging in and trying to make sense of it. And I've talked to people with stories about, uh, you know, dog men and shadow people and all that. And I haven't experienced that. I, I I don't know anything about that, but I do have my own irreconcilable experience that if it was me by myself in the woods, I would be perfectly comfortable thinking, you know, I had a nightmare. Uh, this was something other than reality, but it was in my waking state and shared with two people that I trust deeply that I remain in contact with to this day, we still uh, talk about this and everything. So. All right, right, right. Um, so you have not experienced, uh, you know, earlier when I was talking to Michael Owens, we were talking about shadow creatures, shadow people. What do you, you know, I know you don't, you just mentioned that you have never seen them. What do you think they are based off of, you know, the descriptions? The, the stories that have been uh, in here. Uh, as far as shadow people or with what I experienced? Yeah, either way, either way. What do you think? What do you think? Um, I've uh, become a little more interested in, I guess, uh, esoteric knowledge. And um, if the thing I experienced uh, was more spiritual and that, or ethereal than I think what people would consider that kind of thing. Um, I, I don't believe, I, I believe that it's likely that other things are out there. I, at this point, so this is where I've kind of had to have a hard uh, look at myself since this happened. There are so many people out there that think, um, you know, just UFOs exist, but not Bigfoot or, you know, just ghosts, but not uh, Mothman. You know, I've now kind of come around to kind of the writings of John Keel and uh, Valet in thinking that um, maybe all these things exist in our reality. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have more to do with each other 
than most people uh, would like to consider. Well, uh, from my perspective, you know, from my near-death experience, I absolutely believe everything is connected. You know, from one grain of sand on the other end of the universe to, you know, this pen on my desk. You know, they're all connected. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the way I saw it, uh, it was like a very robust spider web of energy or whatever connective, you know, however you want to explain what that spider web is. Uh, So can I affect something on the other side of the universe? Yeah, from what I saw, but, you know, would I be able to say, hey, I think, hey, I can move a grain of sand on the other end of the universe. I couldn't prove that at all. It's like I can't prove I had a near-death experience other than, hey, I had one. Mm-hmm. You know, it, that's up to you to believe or not. Well, there's, with all the uh, new UFO stuff going through Congress right now, uh, <laughs> I mean, I've been reading more about that too and a real discussion i mean you asked earlier what we talked about i mean a real discussion we had also was that if we encountered some other thing like aliens that just presented itself to us as bigfoot because that's what we were expecting because right. that's how that's how strange our experience was. I well, mean, there, and when it, I say we were, yeah, NASA, go ahead. NASA actually hired twenty four theolo- uh, theologians who are asked to assess how we would react to aliens. Now that's mm-hmm. a recent story that just came out. Well, and you know. Uh, another thing being uh, that's been a more widely circulated theory that I've seen is what if aliens aren't necessarily from somewhere else, but there's something that has been here the whole time. It was sort of like a, you know, a extra dimensional, interdimensional kind of thing. Yeah, or if you know uh, what we experience as that phenomenon is the same thing that people in ancient times, you know, wrote their texts about. It's just kind of same shit, different millennia. Mm hmm. Let's see. Uh, Red but, Raider says My biggest question regarding all of this is what are they? We've given them names, but truly, what are they? So many descriptions through the centuries. And I, I look at it uh, from the perspective of, you know, these ghosts that people see or whatever, the succubus that uh, you wake up and you have a succubus on your chest. There's so many descri- different mm-hmm. descriptions of that uh, from, you know, mm-hmm. the Japanese to, you know, what we experience here in the United States, which, you know, we have a, a melting pot of different cultures. But, you know, I think we're tall, you know, we've named the same damn thing. Different, uh, different things. You know, I look at it from a perspective. Mm-hmm. If it's uh, from the ether, can it transform like a skinwalker, uh, or you know, assume some sort of pleasing or displeasing or hateful or uh, uh, scary thing that this entity knows that it might be pleasing or scary to you, based on whatever its agenda is. I would say that's probably likely. Yeah, I I would say um, overall uh, it was a really scary experience, but I'd say for the three people involved, it was a net positive um, because I think we all have a greater appreciation uh, for what's happening, you know. Yeah, you know, I don't. I think we're on the, as we go forward. You know, this is my belief and what I've seen in the uh, what little bit was shown to me in the future. I think we're going to go through some massive changes, and I think the ether, the veil between us and the other realms, uh, or whatever you want, however you want to describe them, 
is thinning. And we'll be able to see more and more and experience more and more. It may make us more crazy, which I definitely have run into some crazies lately. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, I always afterwards took note that this was the same summer of the uh, 2017 uh, eclipse also. Um, it was right around in that same couple week period, not that day specifically, but right around there. I don't know if that had anything to do in retrospect with what happened. Uh, what do you think about this Project Bluebeam that has been in, you know, been talked about for decades? You know what that is, Project Bluebeam? I don't. I'm not familiar. It's like a simulation of an invasion of UFOs, alien attack, alien invasion. You know, that's put on mm-hmm. by uh, the world government. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess. Um, for most of us people, uh, at the end of the day, it wouldn't really matter. We're being attacked either way. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I don't, um, I don't know if I believe people are a bigger threat to themselves than, uh, you know, if otherwise the other worst thing would be like we're some sort of live unknowing livestock you know there is some sort of uh interdimensional temple grandin who has put us into uh our um kind of place and we're unknowing participants in it mm-hmm. i guess that would be the the scariest thought but at the same time if they stage an invasion or if there's a real invasion i guess either way me and all my friends are poor enough that we'll just get killed so it doesn't really matter who's doing it (laughs) well we all have to die some some sometimes so that's why I look at it. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, so another interesting point about uh, specifically my experience before all this, I had a real rough childhood um, and I was a very cynical and jaded. I, when I was a kid, I liked to go out ghost hunting with friends just because I liked to kind of you know, taunt the paranormal and say it's not real and yada, yada, yada. And this is kind of why my cousin had reached out to me about this is because he knew I had already kind of done that stuff. And that was kind of my attitude as a kid growing up. Um, And then this happened to me. And I, I honestly probably went, through a two or three month period of not really being able to communicate with anyone effectively about it because I was in shock. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then the year after all of this happened, I had a series of, uh, really terrible personal tragedies and I've read certain native lore that sometimes seeing things like this, you know, is an omen or something like that. It's just, you know, you read all kinds of stuff when you get into things like this online. And, uh, but after all that personal tragedy that followed this experience, like, uh, my best friend was killed uh, in a violent way and uh, my estranged father died and uh, just, just some really crazy bad stuff. But this experience also uh, kind of gave me per- like a perspective parachute in the few months I had before all this personal tragedy and sometimes it's hard for me not to think that that's related 
We've got one question for you, Jordan, from James. Sean, can you ask him how the dog was being affected by what they experienced? So um, uh, his name was Gucci, and he was a very large Rottweiler. And the whole night, he was mostly quiet, didn't bark, didn't alert, but would be staring at the only time we ever actually saw one of them was because the dog Gucci had stood up really quickly and we all looked over and in a tree line, we saw a silent, gigantic running silhouette of a upright bipedal humanoid shape through the tree line. The dog Gucci was actually the only reason we ever actually saw one outside of that it was only noises and kind of a sort of what whatever infrasound harassment i don't know did you hear any uh like uh limbs being thrown rocks being thrown or anything like that or any sign of it we did ha- we had things thrown at us throughout the night uh like i said there were times that they would kind of run in charge through the tree line that was all around us that would scare us all. Um, Mm -hmm. Sometimes it even sounded like there was, you know, sort of them making fun of us from out there. I've talked to people who have tried telling me that, you know, these are essentially like the fey folk of the Shawnee forest too, the kind of native native legends uh, that have always existed in this kind of ancient part of the country from the Cahokia mounds down through the Shawnee forest. Um, but like I said, uh, that all just kind of comes down to, who you're talking to and what their experience is uh, as far as kind of what they believe they are, you know? All right. Um, What's your uh, take home after having this encounter? What uh, did it change your view of the world? Did it go, go, holy cow, there's more to this or what I thought it was or how? How'd, I mean, how'd it I now, view? I believe that there are uh, equal and higher intelligences on this planet than just people. Most people right now, I think, like to think that, you know, humanity is like sort of a pinnacle endpoint of intelligence, but I think that there, if these things exist out there, like what I experienced, then they have been here a lot longer. Their culture, they must have a culture, and it must be insanely longer than our human culture here, especially, you know, Western culture on this continent. Mm-hmm. And, um, so, I mean, even if there aren't, um, aliens in the sky, uh, it's proven to me that there's, uh, something outside of just us that is highly intelligent. People like to say, why haven't any of these things been found? And they point to animals, but if they are as intelligent, as we are but perfectly adapted to just live on the planet if they would want to avoid us and i think they'd be able to i think people vastly overestimate uh you know how often there's people out there in the bush (laughs) well there's uh there are stories of wild humans 
you know, you know, not uh, civilized humans, wild mm-hmm. humans out there that, you know, part of the stories that I've come across, uh, is there a probability that there might be some wild humans out there? Sure, why not? You know, there's some wild tribes that, uh, you know, over, I think in Australia or off the shores of Australia or India, if I remember correctly, that they are, you know, bound by law not to you know, invade their privacy. But, yeah, uh, in the hills and whatnot. Yeah. I uh, I I had um, read you know theories uh, saying that the Bigfoot of the Pacific Northwest was some sort of shamanistic native tribe living out in isolation. But I mean, that's also um, I guess. Uh, I I don't know anything about that, so it's hard for me to um, have uh, have a strong opinion. I guess. So what would it, be? It, 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 uh, go yeah. ahead, and finish your finish your thought, and I've got another question. Uh, I was just gonna say it, it's um, hard to um, like. I have a pretty strict uh, self policy of not talking to like people who I work with about this sort of stuff, you know, Mm -hmm. because you very quickly become a crazy person. And I live in a part of the state that I wouldn't say is, uh, super open-minded. I think there's a lot, a lot of places that are not super open-minded. You know, I've been in, uh, well, I've been in healthcare and something paranormal happens to a group of us, you know, a couple of us or two or three, and there's always somebody there that they just get a blank stare. You know, like, well, what mm-hmm. just happened? It kind of invades their, you know, uh, their ability to say, well, that shouldn't have happened. What happened there? And then, you know, they may acknowledge it. I've seen some people just have a blank stare, and then they completely forget about it. It's just interesting how people process this stuff you know that it doesn't normally happen from your day-to-day looking at your freaking square uh, box in your hand to you know walking in your rut from work to back to home yeah i uh in the years since i've talked to uh a lot of different people with a lot of different stories i know someone from the local telegraph who believes they were abducted by aliens. Um, I've talked to a uh, police deputy who claims to have seen a dog man. I I have a close personal friend who has a poltergeist story, but he still tells me that he doesn't believe in ghosts, which I think is one of the funniest ones. He was uh, on vacation and there was poltergeist activity in his hotel room and he uh, swears that it happened that there were things moving around but uh, still can't say that he believes in ghosts you know I, I think people overestimate how open they are to something until it happens to them All right. Uh, well I think I don't know. I've had people that have seen ghosts and said, nope, not happening, not processing that. I'll just forget that ever happened and then move on. Yeah. And, you know, I've seen yeah. people that and that had things thrown at them from unseen forces and go, holy hell, what the, what, what, what? And it just totally, you know, you know, fucks with their calm. And then, you know, mm-hmm. you know they, you know, Go off, go off the reservation for a little bit until they figure it out, and then they come back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. I uh, am actually a uh, local musician, and um, at a few shows of mine, had rambled about how I saw Bigfoot, and quickly found out how crazy people thought that I would be. So. It was a quick learning curve for me. Yeah, it depends on your audience. You know. <laughs> it definitely yeah. depends on the yeah. audience. You know, I I was in a, a family's house uh, two Christmases ago. 
not going to mention who it was or where it was or you know that kind of deal. But uh, they asked me about the show I did, and I said, "Oh yeah, you know, talk about Bigfoot and and uh, ghosts and all that stuff." And uh, you know, around my area here in Southwest Virginia on the border of Kentucky, moonshiners are rampant. Well, I'm not saying rampant, but you know, mm-hmm. it's not uh, uncommon to know a moonshiner. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, the uh, one of them said, jumped up, said, "Yeah, that's uh, just old moonshiner tale." Don't have to worry about that stuff, and that's it. They didn't want to talk about it. Even though this person was an avid hunter, I'm like, okay. Which my brother, my late mm-hmm. brother, was an avid hunter. And, you know, up until the point where our last discussion, he never, you know, said, nope, I don't believe uh, Bigfoot's out there. Even though he was an mm-hmm. avid hunter, and his best friend seen one. And I'm like, okay. You know, I'm kind of wondering, well, do you believe your best friend? Or, you know, I just don't believe it. You know, my brother was one of these yes, no, or maybe so people. If it didn't, you know, he was you know, pretty straight cut. It either happened or it didn't happen, or maybe or maybe not. And that was it. And if it was a maybe, you or, know, he pretty much put it in, nope, it didn't work. It didn't work and pan out. Yeah. Well, uh, so in my experience, it's the same thing as, ghosts and whatever you know it's uh even when it happens to people uh for a lot of people it's just easier to say no you know oh, yeah just deny it and move on you know so, you know there's a, there's a critical point in the conversation where you're you're meeting somebody new and you're talking about what we're talking about you know, if you break that threshold and said, okay, yeah, I understand that you, you know, might have an open mind about this, but there's a couple of key questions that uh, you kind of get, uh, well, a standoffish answer, and then you move on. Or, yeah. you you know, you can make hey. yourself out like you're crazy or something, which, you know, I don't have any problems being uh, viewed as crazy, which, you know, I've been called crazy many times <laughs> before. But I got a piece of paper that says I am sane, but that's about a decade old. <laughs> <laughs> it might be expired by now. It per, I don't know if it had a shelf life put on it or not. <laughs> but, uh, Anywho, hey, it was great talking to you, but I've got company walking through the door, so I got to let you go. Oh, I appreciate you calling in there, Jordan. Anytime you want to call in, feel free. Yeah, uh, keep on doing what you do. Uh, love listening. All right. Appreciate you. Happy New Year. You too. Have a good one. Bye. Now, that was a hell of a call. That was, <laughs> we uh, went all the way around the world on that, that call. All right. Let me see if I can find uh, my main man here. Oh, there he is. Give me just a second, and we'll get uh, Keith on the phone here. Give me just a second. We'll give him a call. Call, uh, Keith will answer. So I will try to give him a call after this call. Hard to tell. At least I gave it a shot. Keith, I'm trying to give you a call, brother. Say, Keith, I get tried to give you a call, man. I told you I'd give you a call. I just did, brother. Let me give you another call since you said ring me. All right, here we go. We'll do another ringy dingy ding ding here. See if you'll pick it up. I'm a ringing you, brother. I tried twice, sir, Keith. Let me know if you can get online there and uh, oh, for Skype, Keith. I tried to give you a call twice, but uh, hopefully we can get get him back on here. 
I'd love to talk to him. He's uh, just a fascinating fellow. You're ringing. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Here we go. All right. We got uh, Keith on the line, finally. There you go, brother. Finally got a hold of you. Let's get turned down this uh, volume here. All right. Well, I don't have, I can't share your, your image out there, Keith. So Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. I try to just keep it in the dark like this so you won't okay. see nothing. All right. So what's going on with you over there? Did you have a good Christmas? I had a great Christmas, so I did, yeah. Maybe mm-hmm. father did to did my younger brothers. He came out today and he helped uh, Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy actually gave him a few quid to, you know, because he was stuck for a few quid and, uh, uh he, you know, he just didn't, he didn't, you know, he, he he just didn't feel right, you know, get asking him for a loan, you know. So I oh, cleaned yeah. the place up, you know what I mean? He's going to come out tomorrow and he's going to help me clean the place up because me and Jimmy, we kind of sort of hoard things. I like to hoard electronic stuff. Like, you know, if I see a circuit board and like, and I see a nice resistor on it or a, or a, or a fancy transport, uh, transistor, you know, or a chip that's rare on it, you know, I'll take that whole your comb. You know, just, just and I never use it. You know, it's just dumped in a corner and it's never used. You know, but uh, but uh, I can just throw all the all the stuff in the back, like. But then, um, but I do get a good bit of work, like uh, fixing tellies, the flat screen oh, okay. TV, like, the power supply pack on you know, that pack. We're in, we're we're in all the the animal lodge. And uh, the AC, the DC, analog to digital is, is uh, converted and all that, and you get your air uh, controls the screen. Just the power supplies part I mainly do with, you know. Oh yeah, well I've I I had a flat screen go bad on me, and it was there's two different video boards that uh, control both halves of the screen, and one little old circuit went out of it. Mm. I could bypass the circuit and get half the picture back, but it wouldn't ever come back. Hmm. And so, um, how big was the circuit? Was was the circuit just one? Was it built into the whole board circuit, or was it just a, a section on that mm, circuit? Let's see. I had to look it up, and was I had it to... isolated from the rest of the circuit? Do you know, there was. Uh, I think there was a resistor I bypassed. You know, kind of straight lined it on the thing. It burned out or something like that. But yeah, I have to go back and look at it or see if I can get another uh, Let's do, piece take, of part. Take, for it. take a screenshot of it, and if you have, you know, if you happen to have the schematic of the of the of, of the place, and just point out where it is on the schematic of the, where 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 that little power supply is, and um, might be able to figure it out. You know, between. Yeah. The, you know, Hey, but Marquita's in the house, and uh, DJ just walked you're in. So, yeah, you're obviously into into electronics yourself. Uh, yeah, I grew up around a dad that loved to mess around, and so I, you know, yeah. it wasn't, you know, I grew up smelling solder, hot uh, solder irons around. Yeah. No, I was always told you needed maths. You need need to be good at maths to do that, and. That just took so many jobs off the table that I wanted to do, you know, when I was a little kid, and and because I I mean I was a dumb man at maths at six year old right up until twenty seventeen to twenty seventeen twenty eighteen when I started learning um this uh, electronics like for real, you know, like properly started studying it then all of a sudden I noticed that I could understand maths like you know like um algebra algebra I could not get that over my head like where x plus y is equal to a is equal to b and uh, if b is 50 and x is is is, <laughs> is 30 then what is y you know t- t- and it's obvious that it's 20 you know mm-hmm. you fucking that, that just was just was beyond me, you know. But now math is one of my stronger subjects, and it's because of electronics. So, you, so, you, so that thing of you needed to be as good at electronics or at math to do electronics is crap because they encourage you to use a, a, a calculator anyway. You know, like it's for resistance and things like that. You know, you're going to be going down into a point, and uh, you know, 
you're going to be going down into like microamps and things like that, like that, which is 0. 0.1567, and then you're going into nanoamps, and then into uh, is it picoamps and things like that, and the same with the resistance and the capacitance and all of the things, and they and they're mm. tiny amounts up into massive amounts, you know. But um, it really did help me with my math. So I could have started when I was at, when I was a Gosling, like. And uh, you know, my life would my life would have went a, a different, a completely different way. You know, and probably and would have went for a better way. I know that way. But then again, you can't look back and you know ha- have regrets. You know, because they only just they only just like they only just like hang like an anchor around your neck. You know, wishing you'd done this and wishing you'd done that. You know. Yeah. Yeah, true. So how's Jimmy? Jimmy is grand. Jimmy just found out, right, that, uh, remember he was telling you that uh, he's seen a man's uh, car, the fellow who owns the land now, where he's seen the puka, and where uh, where the man's house used to stand, uh, he'd be dead over 100 years now, uh, who was lifted up onto into the air by the wild turkey cock, he reckoned. And uh, he took out his knife straight away and started stabbing at him. And uh it dropped him on onto the roof of his own house, mm-hmm. and, and he was there stabbing at the roof of the house. Now back then, that'd be our place, completely our place, to do something like that. Like you would be like, like the like a pariah in the in the whole co- uh, county. Never mind just the town or the area itself. You know, and you just you wouldn't do that. And your children would become pariahs and that. Like you know, like so something definitely happened to him. But uh, your man that owns the place, we were meant to call over to him yesterday and we forgot about it. We were trying to get his number today and couldn't get his number. So we're going to we're gonna make it our business to go over to him this week and talk to him and find out. But anyway, he went into the place bringing in cows. And when he was just about to leave, he realised he had, the, he had the, the tractor facing the gap going out. Now there's no there was no gate on the gap. It was only just a gap going from one field out into another field, like a gap or a kish we call it. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and I think that comes from the old Irish. That's like a bo- like a word you use down in the bog, you know. And I think that that's I think that word comes from the from the word cut, like Hindu cut, a safe path through a, a dangerous area, and it um you know it was mainly used in in the bog you know like where you'd, where you'd put like a, a bridge over water or, or a, you know what i mean a way across you know a dangerous area and it's so funny that it sounds the same as kish and kush and the amount of uh, words that are the identical to people that live in india and uh, india and pakistan and uh, um between India or just down from India and Pakistan, um, or oh, I can't think of the name of the place, but it says it's a pretty famous place. When that when that um, Boxing Day tsunami happened, um, water went flying out, and they could actually see that there was temples there. Uh, it's, it's just one of the oldest cities in the world is, is there. Um, mm. Hengo Daro isn't, isn't too far from there, which was uh, destroyed by. By by something, uh, by either well, this says in the in the bag of Gavita, it says that it was the Iron Thunderbolt that destroyed that place. Like and you know that's why it was buried. But anyway, getting back on to this man, he went down anyway, right? And he went to get back into the tractor and you know drive out, and he had to, he had the tractor facing the gap to drive out into the next field and then just drive up between the the, the long bit of it. It's a bit of like a lane where it's only about, what? It's only about like 70 yards long. You know what I mean? And then it comes out onto onto our road between two houses, yeah? And uh, that's where he noticed that when he gets up into the tractor, that his, the headlights of the tractor is pointing straight at a ditch. So he gets out and looks around and starts walking around and say, see, like, 
where the fuck is this ditch? And he had a torch. And uh, uh, next one he says this big massive huge dog came up out of the ditch growling and snarling and snapping at him. And he says it he says his eyes well it was like fire was coming out of his eyes. He says he says his, uh, it wasn't even shining the light at him, so it wasn't eye reflection, but it literally it look it literally looked like fire was coming out of this thing's eyes. The same thing as what my uncle's seen. So that that's the puka in the dog form, you know? Or the hellhound. You know? But that's one of, one of the famous uh, ones that the puka takes. So when was the last the time you saw one of these puka? Who, me? Mm-hmm. I, I've never seen one, no. Jimmy Jimmy has seen it. Like, and, uh, his brother John has seen the dog, the dog version. And then that that man, I I just give his first name. Thomas is the na- is his name. He owns the land now. He'd be the last person now to have seen it, you know. But it's been seen in in that in that one place. It's been seen apart from the the other dog time. It was seen as as a dog. Uh, it was up where I seen that leprechaun thing. No, I can't call it a leprechaun because. I would, if I seen it from 15 foot away and it was run, I would have been, you know, convinced that it had a tail or little suit on him, you know. And I probably, you know, my imagination probably would have swore that I saw, if I saw like a glint in a glass, it probably would have, I would have thought maybe, maybe it was a glint off a buckle of his shoe, you know. But because I seen him so close and I realised that it wasn't, it wasn't close, it wasn't a tailored suit. But, but my God, it looks like a tailor or two, but it's only just leaves. And when you take your eye off them for a second, all they do is lie down flat and they just stay still. And you're thinking, where are they gone? They disappeared. No, Bigfoot, they do that as well. I heard, I heard that they, they spread their arms and legs out really wide and then they're, they literally can like finger walk and toe, toe, go on their tippy toes and their fingers lift themselves up and uh, finger walks called a spider walk. And they're meant to be able to do it quite fast as well. And he just heard, just found that out there, uh, was it last night, off uh, Cryptids Canada. You know, the one with the lovely voice, Mrs. King, Mrs. Leslie King, with another sexy yeah. voice. And all yeah, I like, I like Cryptids voice. Canada. Got a quick question for you, since, you know, I yeah. live in the United States. Can you describe what a leprechaun looks like? You know, you know what I have a visualization of a leprechaun is on the uh, outer uh, packaging of a cereal for kids. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Well, to me, that's that's my 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 what I think a leprechaun looks like because the thing that I saw wasn't a leprechaun. You know what I mean? But maybe it's been mistaken. For being a leprechaun for God knows how long, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, there are other guys that will swear, oh, that 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 it had buckles in its shoes and it says good day to them and that they were talking to it and everything. And then uh, and then it jumped it jumped up in, into a into a little wisp wisp of wind and disappeared. And you know, like and you you know that the person is just bullshitting, you know. But. Uh, like if I like I'll only tell stories that I know myself or that I know where I know the person and I know the place because like you'll know places in Ireland but if they're sacred you know the minute you walk in there the atmosphere changes like the birds don't stop singing or anything but you just you can just feel it on your skin you know to be quiet here and to be respectful you know and you don't piss or shit in in here do you know what I mean or you know, you don't go plucking any of the leaves or uh, breaking any of the branches when you're in here, do you know, and you leave with respect, you know. So you get that feeling, you know, where you know, you'll know when you're in a in a place like uh, that that's sacred, do you know what I mean, and where fairies are. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Eric Woods there from Gypsy Road, he was saying in about two years he's coming from uh, over to Ireland, and I said, if he's going through Longford, I'd be more than glad to show him where where the Pukas are, as long as he's there during the day. If he's there during the evening, it's not a hope in hell I'm going down there. Not a hope in hell, no way. 
But uh, I, I told her I'd bring him out to Ockney Cliff and show him the dolmen. Now, that's that's the that scenery before you get into Ockney Cliff. It's just one minute you're looking down at just like mad rolling hills, falling down into like a big valley of green. And then you just cross over the over the hill. And next minute you're looking down a valley that goes down into like all lakes just spread all across and it's like something now lord of the rings it's just absolutely beautiful you know but uh i didn't even know there was a dolmen there till i seen a sign there dolmen so what the fuck and so went, went walking across the field and there it was a dolmen yeah didn't even know that like, hmm. and, uh, apparently I've, a seen, dolmen. I've seen some wild pictures from uk with dogman and uh well actually bigfoot too yeah, UK, yeah. There, there's a girl. There's a girl here, uh, Claire Ellis. Um, she's in the chat here, so she is. Um, I That's actually her. went to Facebook and logged in for the first time in ten years. Yeah, oh just God. to look at her dogman footage that she had. And there's a real, real scary one of one where it's smiling at her behind a tree. Like, and I always thought, well, maybe, maybe it's not like a smile. Maybe it's, it's just the beginning of a growl. But no, they, they actually do smile. Do you know what I mean? And it's a smile and it's an evil smile. You know, they know what they're doing. Do you know, it's not it's not the beginning of a of a growl or anything. It's a it's a, it's a smile. You know. So, Hi, uh, How I have been I've had this discussion a couple of three times about these creatures, these supernatural things. Uh leprechauns, uh, the puka. What are they wanting from us when they, you know, scare the shit out of us? Are they, you know, are they feeding off that energy, us being scared or fascinated or what? Well, no, they, but they, well, the fairies in Ireland apparently they just knock, they just, they, they just knock sport out of us, out of us, like you know, they knock sport out of us, like they're they're like immortal creatures, like and they get bored, so scaring the shit out of us, like it's just a way to be toward them. You know, but then you got mm-hmm. bad ones that, like, you know, that even fairies won't entertain. You know what I mean? And the puka, the puka would be one of them. You know what I mean? He's, he's, he's on, he like, like, he's on, he's just right on the line. And then there's another thing that, like, there's so many stories in Ireland that are nearly identical to stories in Japan. And I don't know how that, how, how that has happened. It can't be a coincidence. There's like a are one of our most famous stories, like Tiernanog, Oshin and Tiernanog, where he goes to the land of the young for three hundred years, and he but he wants then to come back. So the one uh, that he was in love with says that he went back, and he says, "If you get off this horse, you'll die. You have to. You if you if you step foot on other land apart from Tiernanog, he says you'll die." And he seen this fella lifting a rock in the field and he, he reached down anyway to help him pull the rock and fell off the horse. And when he hit the ground, he literally turned into a 300-year-old man and withered away and died. And that was the end of that. And the princess weeped and everything. for what. But there's a story in Japan where a man was taken for three days, not 300 years, but three days, down underwater as well. Uh, uh, to a magical kingdom, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and the princess wanted to keep him there, but when he came back, six years had passed, you know, or a hundred years had passed, you know, not three hundred years, a hundred years had passed, but he was able to walk around, you know, and all of his family was dead and everything, you know, and nobody knew him, and you know, so they knew of the story of him. But uh, they believed that it happened to him. Um, he was brought before the court or something like that. Uh, someone from Japan would be able to tell you more about that that story. Mm-hmm. Um, I find that very interesting, you know, like that stories do connect uh, with, with other stories all across the world. You know, it's, it just can't be a coincidence. I, so, you know, well, I, I've had this, said this same thing, this same show. I think uh, we're, uh, from whatever point we are on this blueberry of a planet, we see the same thing and we describe it in different uh, different variating uh, variations of uh, descriptions. 
you know, gray aliens, you know, what were they back in the 18, 17, 2000s, exactly. you know, that kind yeah. of stuff. You know, theories, you know? what, what, do, what do they call it over to Russia? You know, and how much, do, I know they have a lot of uh, UFO stuff over in Russia. Like Bobby Yaga, she has that house and, and that chicken leg yo. But she also flies around in a big cauldron and uh, she has a she has her like a she has her broomstick, you know what I mean? And she uses it like an oar to fly around in. So a cauldron, mm-hmm. a black cauldron, do you know what I mean? And this thing coming flying like someone might say, I've seen Bobby Yaga, uh, uh, Bobby Yaga and, and it could be it could be a, a fucking a UFO being abducted like uh like uh jimmy being stuck in the field that night um that uh thomas man i nearly said a second name that thomas man who owns the land now who uh slept under the tractor because uh now it was a four it's a four tractor now we we still haven't got to see him yet now we have to make it our business to go over and see him and get the full story off him you know the color of the dog the size of the dog he says the dog was the size of an ass anyway, and he, he if it was so big, like, uh, we need to get a look at the tractor as well to see that it have a back window, because most tractors over here, you know what I mean, they won't have a back window, you know. Um, they'll have side windows and a front window, but they won't have a back window, you know. It'd be left open to the elements, so if he was driving that, it could just come up and just grab him over, but uh, he felt safer. Uh, sleeping under the tractor that night and another weird thing my father um seen his he seen his uh jeep there going when he was going to work right, right. and he seen him unloading cows off a uh, off a uh, off a uh, uh like a trailer and uh he beeped that and says law you know we have to law and uh he seen him then coming home from work the jeep was still there and uh, then he was going out then that night around half ten, say, and uh, it was about two o'clock in the morning, I suppose, then he was coming back out, and uh, but still seemed to show care, just, just fucking yoke, you know. Yeah, we got a question, so, Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan. When he, then he was going out, he was going to, to work the next morning, and it was still there, and then when he was coming home, the next uh, morning, it was gone. But apparently, according to um, a friend of uh, my father's who, who who met him on the road, who lives over beside him, who met him on the road, they probably just met on the road and, and talked real quick, you know, with the, with the windows down, um, you know, that uh, he was only stuck in the field for one night. But uh, Jimmy seen his, seen his van there for, like, uh, two two days and, you know, well, two days, well, two days and two nights, and it was the third, the third morning that he was that he basically left. Then, you know, so God knows yeah. what happened to him. But was he abducted, or was he stuck under there for two days from the puka? Mm. You know. Got uh, Jonathan wants to know what to Ireland, uh, what part of Ireland you be from. I'm from Longford. It's right in the middle of Ireland. So it is. Right in the middle of Ireland. Sorry about that. I just better, I'm trying to fight off a sneeze while I'm talking to you. There's not, there's not much. Uh, there's not much in Longford, like you know. So that's why. That's why I told uh, Chaos that if he comes over, that like I bring him out to Ock and Cliff to the Donovan because that's the only thing that I could know that like a tourist might want to see. Like, but then again, like you know, when you're on tour, like you might want to see like something like like like, like the cathedral in Longford, you know, mm-hmm. or just anything. Like, but the good thing in Ireland yeah, is uh, you can just stop anywhere along the road and then just start walking. Just just pick a line and just start walking straight through all fields and nobody is going to say anything to you yeah as long as you don't have a dog with you and uh you're not, not walking into a field full of cattle that where they where you're going to get trampled to death by the because the the cattle will be after the dog and the dog will cower in between your legs it nearly happened to me so it did well you can't get away with that just uh going into anybody's on anybody's land around here 
No, I can't. But over here, over here, you can like. And if they do come out, like you can just say, "Oh well, we're we're tourists, and we were told that we were told that uh, there was something brilliant to see down here, like an old castle ruin." And uh, but it says that uh, it's not on the map, like. But we were told that it was down here, and I says, "I uh, just say uh, I think somebody might be taking the piss." It says, "But I've never seen such green grass and such healthy grass, you know." And and you know what I mean? Soft talk them and say. Say, 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 I, I commend you. I commend you on on your beautiful land, uh, sir. Says we don't we don't get uh, this like in America. Say, say, there's be a lot drier compared to this. This looks like it uh, get give great uh, milk and butter from grazing cow cattle on on this type of grass, you know. But um, ninety nine. That's only then. That's only the one percent that will come out and ask you what or oh, what are you doing here. You know, ninety nine percent of them won't even bother you. You know, uh, no, no clear. Uh, Jimmy's in bed, so he is. Well, Jimmy's yeah. in bed, and like he knew that he knew that you were on here tonight, but he went to bed. Um, That's all right. That's all right. But, you gotta uh, sleep. You gotta sleep. You know, I'm a, uh, I'm a, a firm there's believer. Some more problems with, with PayPal and with watching. It. Like last night, I was able to ring you on video call, but Bart wasn't shown an option for video call. And then when he finally showed the uh, uh, um, the option to video call him, um, it it um, it it would you know it would fucking load for a second or so, and then and then it just you know what I mean? Turn around and say that he's not online. And plus, yours had a like a, a green correction mark and a green dot beside it, and so some other person that I've never heard of before in my life. But but Balt's never never had the the yolk on him. You know, the, the green yolk. They said that he was online, but other people were ringing in, not having a problem. You know. Well, they had the uh, telephone number for his. He had the. He just started that uh, Skype account, I think, yesterday, or that's when he admitted he had one. So that yeah, he's still getting around it. I have no no clue what happens. Fine. If he goes into the settings, will it go? Will it? What does it show? Um. What does it show? Um. Uh, do you know? Will it show the? Do you know the fucking? Let me see. I'm just gonna look here, just on on the normal thing here. No, I'll wait. I'll wait till the call is over. I'll just check it out. I wonder if he goes into the settings. Can he? Can he set it to um? That you it's, have uh, to, You can make it, a, a you can make a Skype to Skype phone call anywhere yeah, in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tried doing that, but um, it kept on uh setting up like a like a like a group chat that I had that 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 I uh send out invitations to people and they had to you know accept the invitation doing all this bullshit like i got you i got you well yeah, usually it's... when i put my uh um, thing in the chat for my skype they have to you know set up a, a chat with me and wave at me and then i'll i'll uh connect with them and then they can call me at lib after that yeah all right wasn't allowing me to do that at all, and that um, that 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 that, that code that he put out, like you know, and able to get in, yeah. that wasn't letting me me put that in anywhere at all. Do you know what I mean? To join to join his chat, you know. Well, he's got a house full of uh, younger people in there. He's got two sons and a daughter, and well, soon to be daughter and all. And okay, maybe they can figure out how to get that thing uh, working for him. I don't know. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain. Maybe I'll have to. I, I'll probably have to, you know, walk him through it and see what he knows, and then you know, fill in the blanks for it. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to be over there. I'd like to be able to walk him through Audacity because uh, that's that. That was the first thing that we downloaded when we were doing Sound Engineer back in 2009. And Audacity is such a handy thing to have. You know what I mean? Never, and, I've and never messed funny. with it. It's only just to put. I think it's only just 100 megabytes. Do you know what I mean? And it's and it's the the, the handiest thing going for a sound like you know it's basic. It's as basic as hell. But like you can still isolate sounds out uh, 
cut certain frequencies that they shall that they won't be heard in in New York. I mean, if you if you if you spent a whole day at it, yeah, and you had certain sections of a person's voice, you could have them say, you know what I mean, whatever you want to, you know. Right. Although there's they are out there now that they can simply just do that just without even thinking, you know. But but for for what it is like, it um it, it's very good, you know. It's very Absolutely. good. Yeah. Well, you can always look on, um, heck, if I don't know how to do something, YouTube or other places on the net will yeah, give you yeah, a pretty look good on quick YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they'll give you a quick tutorial on it. That's how yeah. I learned how to do uh, uh, OBS Studio. Am I the yeah. best at it? Nope. I'm pretty straightforward uh, novice at the damn gun thing. Thanks. Actually, That's DW funny. sent me a, a link to do a thing I didn't know how to do. I was like, well, hell, that's easy. And that's part of my show now. It's what uh, flashes my phone number every once in a while. Yeah. And see, that's how I heard learned electronics, was watching YouTube things and then getting books and then look looking at different channels and like looking at, at them for, religiously for three years, you know what I mean? And then, um, and then I should start watching. You know, it's kind of getting bored because, uh, you know, I kind of... Uh, met me goals that I wanted to I wanted to be able to make a radio from scratch yeah and uh, power supply and things like that and make a radio that I could receive and transmit from and uh, I built my I built an AM frequency I built an AM frequency radio out of copper wire rolling around a little spool uh, yeah when I was probably five or six years old and that's where my electronic stuff came into being mm. now my eyesight sucks so i can't see these little tiny green size or smaller and green size uh screws that are around you know sure. Sure. I, tested, I tested my patients just changing changing out the uh thermal paste on my mac mini yesterday sure. <laughs> i was like mm. uh, i might be just a hair too old and I did have about three or four screws left out of the, the project, but it went together good, and I didn't have any errors. Yeah. So I said, maybe uh, they didn't well, need that, those well, screws. These screws are meant to be in there, but uh, it, it still sounds all right. So long as, so long as I didn't drop one in there, as long as it's not rattling, uh, should we right, leave right, it? Right, right, Well, uh, there was something rattling in there, and I took it apart to where I could shake it out. I don't know what the hell it was that was rattling in there. It might have been the damn <laughs> screw, but... Uh, and it doesn't rattle down, it's working just fine. Yeah. But see see this hat here, um uh oh no, so you can't see it. You don't um I got a, I got like a what the what the trendies call a beanie, you know, a skull cap and it's got uh it's got the LED light on it, on the front of it and you can recharge it like oh, that's you cool. it. and it's got the three the three different uh, settings of brightness, like, and it doesn't have that stupid fucking strobe light flash either, which I fucking hate. Uh, or the SOS, you know. But um, Jesus, it's it's come in so handy, so it has like since I got it, like so I've been fucking, I've been trading my auntie since I got that. You know? So like, yeah, best present they ever got. Like best present that I've got for Christmas. In a long, long, long time. Mm. But yeah, I, I can't wait. I can't wait to myself and Jimmy find out more of, about the uh, uh, this Thomas man who owns the land and what and what exactly did he see and how long did he actually think he was down there? Do you know what I mean? Right. You know, before he crawled out from underneath the tractor, like, like, and he says that this dog had 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 it looked like fire was coming out of its eyes. So. Plus, uh, I was telling you about the man in the trasher. The, the, the boys thought he fell into the trasher, but really he seemed like a big, tall, like eight foot man, and uh, all dressed in black, like but with like big, wide shoulders, and he looked like he had a big, shiny, silvery buckle, and uh, he screamed like a little goat girl. He was carrying up two pails of milk, and uh, the hedges would have been eight foot tall and his uh, the man's head was just just above the head so he's about maybe nine foot or eight and a half foot and uh, he just flew up in the air and over the ditch 
and was gone. You know, uh, mm-hmm. took about an hour where uh, where where this this was literally right in front of this happened. You know, so it wasn't like he was looking on down a dark road. You know what I mean? And or in the evening time, this happened literally right in front of him. You know, so I wonder what that was. Mm, don't know. That's hard to tell. Hard to tell. Oh, that. Yeah. Hard to tell there, buddy. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell Jimmy, I said, how yeah. do? And, uh, well, indeed. I will indeed. He gets up. Well, he, well it's, uh, it's, uh, what is it? It's eight minutes to four in the morning. Eight, it's uh, 3.52 a.m. here now, so he won't be up till maybe 11 tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Let's see. You're five hours ahead of me. I'd put uh, put it about 8 o'clock in the morning. I probably, hopefully, will be about sleeping, hopefully, at 8 o'clock. Uh, although uh, I've, I've had uh, problems falling asleep at odd time, so that's interesting. Uh, I, I, do, I do sleep as well. Like I, sometimes I get, sometimes I only sleep two hours in a night, or sometimes I might eat, sleep four, and then sometimes I could go up three nights without sleep, and like, my sleep pattern has never been consistent all my life like since even since I was a, a little tiny kid it was always like uh, you know sitting in the bed daydreaming and you know not not being able to sleep you know mm-hmm. and then but you get medication like like value and all that but then you, you just get addicted to them just 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 like if you're on heroin you know and they're not the way to go yeah, you Valium know. isn't uh, isn't something you should be on the no. long term. That's about a two week uh, round and course. Antidepressants as well is is even worse. You know, it's even yep. worse. Yep. Yeah, yep. I I just I just won't check. Yeah, it works with uh, some people. It, it works wonders with some people. It doesn't, and I agree with uh, you. Get addicted to just about anything. I'm addicted to freaking coffee, but uh, <laughs> drink this. The shit through uh, now it's ten o'clock and I just took a last sip about an hour ago so I'm and done with I'm coffee tonight. I'm addicted to smoking cigarettes and uh, I'm addicted to tea and I'm addicted to uh, oh what's the name of these yogurts? They're they're, they're like yogurts, uh, they're like toffee yogurts and uh, these breadsticks and then these um, wafers with uh, pink and white marshmallow in the middle of them. Oh. They're lovely, so yeah. But I have to try and keep it hid from Jimmy because uh, he's diabetic, and, and oh my God, that man has an awful sweet tooth. <laughs> that sounds like mean, my like, grandfather. My grandfather uh, would sneak uh, sneak off and get him a Snickers bar or chocolate bar or something. Oh like yeah, that. and and stuck the whole thing into his mouth. He couldn't fit no more into it, and then start chewing it all up, and then the rest of it. It'd be that's that's the way Jimmy would go. You know what I mean? okay. More power to him if that's what he, you know. He has to sneak it around. My yeah. grandfather was a brittle diabetic, and uh, he would do that. He would be good most of the time, but he'd get, he'd have his moments where uh, the hell with it. I take a, I'll take a chocolate bar over a, a heart attack yeah. any day. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's what Jimmy's like now. You no, know, but that uh, love. I'd love to go up to that Thomas's man and find out what what he's seen. Because I know that cousins of ours, they're snobs now, like, you know, but uh, cousins of ours, uh, they, they, they were down at the back of their houses, which would uh, which would uh, actually be the, the field, you know what I mean? Uh, mm-hmm. Or down, when you go down the lane right between the two houses, about 70 yards long, um, and the first field they come into, they're actually down the back there, you know, having a shite before they go in, in, in at night, like when they were kids, like this would be back like in the, in the fifties, no, but they got ran in one, 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 one night by a, by a big dog that was meant to be the size of a donkey. So I don't know. It has to be the puka. You know, because an animal mm-hmm. that size, uh, would, would be killing pets, would be killing livestock. It, it couldn't, it couldn't be a flesh and blood thing. Yeah, because it just would be, it would just, you know, how could it sustain itself? Well, a big thing like that, it should be uh, 
needing a whole lot of calories. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, uh, Keith, I'm going to have to hop off here. I'm going to do something real quick before I start ending the, you're wrapping up the show, but, uh, I appreciate you calling in and I definitely still want to talk to Jimmy. I still definitely want to talk to Jimmy. Yeah, and it was a pleasure. See tomorrow, and we're going to ring at when when the opening hours of the bank is is uh, open, because uh, we got a letter saying something got to do with um, internet banking or something like that that they're they're doing away with it or they were changing it or something like that. Oh, we're going to have to ring in and get that sorted out because I'll don't call you. Time. I can call you on I Skype anytime. Man. He's, he's got the bank card, but I I don't have a bank card. I just had a. A card, and um, you know that you buy in the shops where you buy the phones, and you can top them up. Then you buy credit for them and top them up, and that's how I, I used to buy all my stuff online. You know, oh, yeah. uh, but um, it's gone. It's been away with it now. You know, but um, uh, if not um tomorrow, I'm gonna go in and uh, the one bank that's left in in the town that left. Uh, that I haven't gone to. All the rest of them I've went to, and I walk in three accounts and uh, left those accounts for over six months without a penny in them, so the accounts are closed. And therefore, once you leave through that three times with with the same bank, then you're not allowed to uh, reopen a, 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 a fourth account with them. You can't, you can't bank with them no more. But if you won the lottery and I went to them, I guarantee you they'd, 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 tell, they'd, let, they'd take you on. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you, no. you, you present something uh, with enough zeros on it, they'd open the door for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. you know, all the all red carpet would be put out there and everything, champagne, you know, and massaging your head and everything, so they would. Yeah, they'd yeah. pick your nose for you if it had enough yeah. zeros on it. Oh, so I, I, I'd go in, so I would, after a hard day's work in the, do- in the bog, and I'd go in, <laughs> and I'd just put my feet up there and just pull off that sock there now, and... Uh, uh, manicure that them toes for me and the feet be black with bogged or dust so they would i mean black like you know you you you'd you'd, you'd, you'd it'd be like something like it'd be something like you'd see on fair factor you know <laughs> i'd say i I'd know i want a good job done on them you know <laughs> but anyway sean i'll let you go i'll right. let you get to, get to do do what you have to do and it was good to hear from you yeah, well, and likewise. Hopefully I'll, have this, hopefully, I'll have a new bank account tomorrow, which, which I need. All right. You know? Well, um, then, good luck on you, and uh, definitely look forward to talking to you and Jimmy once again. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I just can't wait to go over and see that man and hear his own story from his own mouth, you know, and to what happened. You know, here, uh, if you got a this, phone, if you got a phone, uh, try to remember to make a, a voice recording of it. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I'll record it, yeah. I'll yeah, record it. Yeah, All the right. phone, yeah, yeah, I can record it, no problem. That sounds cool, man. All right. All right. Thank All you, right, Keith. Son. Thank you, Keith, no and, uh, Happy New Year, brother. All right, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everyone in the chat. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, there was Keith from over in Ireland. Uh, Jimmy was asleep, so, you know, can't, uh, can't fault him for wanting to go to bed early. I wanted to do one thing, and I want to get this, uh, going. I'm going to give you guys a free, hold on a second, free 15 minutes of Dogman Cams. I think I still got the, yeah, there you go. That's it right there. Let me hop over here to Dogman Cams. Brand new. Oh, okay, that's just a weed. And let me turn on the uh, audio for Dogman Canada down here in the settings. There you go. See if we hear any more wild stuff. Uh, the Vault Nightmares apparently had a big show to do over on a Bigfoot show on Blog Talk tonight. Look for his uh, web page or whatever he made and put out something about uh, you know a link to go and listen to his show that you did as a guest but uh, we're looking live now on dogman cams dogmancams.com 5.99 a month you better get that uh, uh, rate is going to go up I think at the end of this month so if you want in 
go there and subscribe. $5.99, I think, I don't know what the top out price will be, but definitely go over there and subscribe PDQ. Uh, Vault has, uh, where's you above? Vault has said that he's going to install at least two, maybe three more additional cameras there on his property. And then Z Wiki Woods, and then whatever he's calling that other piece of property that he just bought here recently. I don't know what he's calling that. But uh, yeah, Merry Christmas to everybody. Hope everybody had a good uh, holiday. I definitely did. It was interesting to spend it, uh, Christmas Eve with the, the Vol of Nightmares and whatever craziness it was going on in his backyard that night, which that's what we're looking at right now. But uh, anybody see anything like this uh, in this uh, free preview? Let us know in the comments after the fact, or if you see it live, let me know. Bot said there was something, uh, a man with a uh, uh, blood injector on his property Christmas Eve night. Well, what the hell would be somebody be out in anybody's woods on anybody's property Christmas Eve night and try to hide from you then? volume of my iron. Nickel, I had a pretty good Christmas, can't complain. Uh, half my family was uh, sick with the flu, and they're doing pretty good. Uh, my sister was out of work until, I think she's going to work tomorrow. Pretty sure. Pretty sure she's uh, doing alright. She's listening. Love you, sis. Hope that you're feeling better. Still warm enough to, uh, for crickets down in Mississippi? That's what it sounds like. <laughs> I don't know, Claire. Would anybody sleep in that tent in the uh, vault's backyard? Would you sleep in that tent in vault's backyard? One, if you would. Two, if you wouldn't. Three, oh hell no. In the chat. This this particular one right here. Would you sleep in that? Mm. Looks like it may be a little foggy out there. Raise with three. Oh hell no. <laughs> <laughs> or if there was enough money in it, would you? Would you sleep out there for the night? Bunch of old hell knows. I guess that's consensus. I haven't seen any other than threes in the chat. Bass is three. Yeah, that's a big no on his end. I... It's been a while. Last time I was spending a night in a tent, oh geez, it was probably about 20 degrees outside. Had some heating source, uh, electric heating source, but that was still freaking cold. Jennifer Metzger said, yep, what the hell? Why would you want to go out there and spend a the night in that backyard there? Michael Owens, yes, I'd kick it with the wheelie. <laughs> Alrighty, brother. You notice that he doesn't do that uh, r recording of the baby crying in his backyard anymore. Nickel says for enough money. Okay, dokie. I don't know if there's enough money for me to get out there in the backyard. Which big disclaimer: there's no money been offered anywhere for anything. Jennifer says, I'm dying to see a Sasquatch. What's the fascination to see one? You just want to be in front of something so big that it would uh, make three, four, five of you? Mm, 
I know enough people that have seen these things. Bigfoot, dogmen, you name it. I don't need to be, uh, be in front of one to prove to me that's real. Alright, definitely go to dogmancams.com before the rate goes up. It's, I think it's currently $5.99 a month. I think the end, the end of the month, which is only two days away, the price goes up. And I don't know what the price is. DW was in the chat earlier while uh, Keith was on the phone, but uh, I don't hear anything odd other, other than the occasional road traffic there. See a dog man. I, you know, I, I know people that actively want to go out there. Connor Flynn wants to go see these things. A bunch of other people. Uh, Vault of Nightmares. God love him. Crazy son of a gun he is. He still wants to go out and find these things just to prove to people that they exist. DDoS. They are cut from a different cloth than I am. I'm happy just to not see them, know they're there, instead of run out there and say, hey, growl at me, rip me in two. Nope, not me. I'd rather keep my other leg. <laughs> lost one already, don't need my other one lost. Nichols says it would not want to see a dog man. I'll move over in the boat on that one. I do not want to see one. Is there a train? I hear a train whistle or something. Anybody else hear that train whistle? Or is, is that just my earphones doing some funky stuff? Ain't no bugs around here. But there's some bugs on the camera there. Stimulate says I wouldn't go camping with Connor. His energy would wake the dead. From what I understand, he's a pretty calm fella the hell's that? Is that, uh, oh, that's a, that was right behind my head. A little dot right there. I believe that's a spider web, IR light on the spider web. Yep, I believe that's what that is. Yeah, hit those thumbs up, folks more thumbs up the better us off if you want to donate that's a way easy and uh, free way to donate to the show just hit those thumbs up share it out if you like it definitely uh subscribe to the channel subscribe to dogmancams.com definitely do that uh, i like going camping myself Back in the day, these old bones, they don't uh, get around too good here lately. And as we play voyeurism in the backyard of Lakea and of all the nightmares, I wonder if they're going to get any rain or anything up down there. I'm going to get uh, weather services announced a ton of rain. There you go. A ton of rain. Bad storm here in Tennessee. No electric. Yeah, I just saw the weather service said that Chattanooga, uh, where I live right there on the border of Kentucky and Tennessee, Chattanooga had a severe weather announcement. South of that, uh, definitely. Been a while since I've been down in Chattanooga. I always dreaded going through that place because it was a hot spot for uh, 
speed traps down through there. I don't know, it's probably still the same thing, but it's been a hot minute since I've been down through there. Uh, let's see, Brian Bowden. He texted uh, my number, 931-994-6917. Uh, says, uh, the realms, which we're talking about, the realms that uh, Michael Owens was talking about earlier. The realms he's talking about are real, but you can make things appear or disappear just as quickly in dreams. So... Apparently that's a real thing. You know, when I grew up, when I was growing up, I had such vivid uh, dreams that I, you know, I halfway wondered if I was living another life in a dream. You know, believe what you will, but uh, you know, I'll still argue with myself if that was true or not. Three oh one. Some storms are going through Waldo, Florida. Where's Waldo? What's well, in Florida? Florida. All right, folks, give it about uh, three more minutes for this free preview. Like I said, uh, five ninety nine a month right now uh, before the end of the month, but it's going to go up. How long has it been since I, uh, Jason Brock? It just depends on which uh, part of Mammoth Cave. That thing's that sucker is huge. There's about 1,200 now, uh, 1,200 estimated miles of those Mammoth Cave systems. The last one I was in was in Lee County, Virginia. It's right on the Kentucky border. If you look at the Virginia border, Lee County is the very tippy tip of that boot. If you look at the Virginia as a boot. And uh, there's a few cave systems down there, and I've been in a couple of them. My late brother used to do a lot of spelunking. Holy cow, some of the stuff he told me about, showed pictures of, underground lake systems. Holy cow. Now, imagine that, 1,200 miles plus, if not more, of those uh, intricate. Actual park, Jay. Uh, actual park. It's been probably about a decade since I've been that way. Been a, a decade for it. Easy. Beautiful place out through there. Beautiful place. I think I'm rural here with all the you know scarce population and houses and stuff like that. You hit on the Virginia-Kentucky border, it is like all frickin' forced. And then all of a sudden you come upon a, uh, you know, a lot of houses together, like Hellier, Kentucky. Oh, wow. And tell me there isn't something in those cave systems. I guarantee you there's something in those cave systems. I heard they had tied the system to a few that stretched in an entire Appalachians. I about guarantee to you there's a, you know, there's case systems that stretch across most of uh, the United States, if not uh, the world. Especially if you seen those big uh, tunnel diggers they've got, where they can you know basically drill a highway out of uh, rock and dirt. But, uh, you know, four-lane highways, five-lane, six-lane highways in the places. But, uh, again, this it was the free preview of Dogman Cams. Dogmancams.com. Definitely go over there and uh, check that sucker out. But, uh, all right, let me turn this thing over here off. And head over here. Get back up to here. Hit the, no, I don't want to do that. Oh, why not? There you go. There's the chat. I didn't go over the chat. Uh, I have to go back here and re redo some stuff in my OBS. But there you go. There's the chat for the night, folks. I appreciate you showing up for the night and calling in. Had to uh, let's see one, two, three.
three callers tonight. Wow. Then there was a couple other callers that didn't make it, but I appreciate everybody. Yeah, Shell, appreciate you. You know, this is one of those things. Folks, if you want to, you know, join in the DW crowd, the DW family, you know, subscribe to the whole family of shows. I put the links in the chat earlier. You got the Lakeo show, the Vol Nightmares, Dogman, Kim's, uh, let's see, Thaddeus Cray, Bass Mayhem, Impromptu Truth, uh, Chaos Theory Productions. You know, go out there and find those folks. Uh, they're fantastic. I've been turning, you know, I like Chaos, and Chaos and I are, you know, become fast friends, but his channel is rocking good. Lakeo, the Lakeo show. She's just one of those laid-back people that like to talk about everything. You picking up that Orleans accent? Uh, well, I live in southwest Virginia. I don't know if I got the Orleans accent, but there you go. Could be. That's a pretty long stretch to be being, <laughs> being up in Virginia versus Orleans, but Stimulate, there you go. I thought about you yesterday, Stimulate. I was working on my Mac Mini from 2011. And I was like, damn it, I need, need you know, I was wondering, well, do I need a hammer to fix this thing, or do I actually need to complete this job? But uh, changing out the thermal paste on a freaking Mac Mini, uh, I guess versus doing it on a MacBook was a whole lot easier, but, uh, you know, I'm getting a little too old and the fingers aren't as nimble as they used to be. But uh, there you go, folks. If you want to reach out to me, G at imdarkwaters.com. Three nine, or... Uh, what was I about ready to give? I was about ready to give my old grandfather's now defunct <laughs> now defunct uh, uh, damn phone number. 931-994-6917 you can reach me after hours or you know Chasing the Truth 2018 on Skype Sean G at IamDarkWaters.com or I am Darkwaters or I am at IamDarkWaters.com that's the way it goes, brother and sisters, and whatever else you identify as. Jordan, thanks for calling in there, brother. And Michael, and uh, let's see, who else? Keith. Yeah, there you go. Keith, appreciate y'all calling in. Anyway, as per usual, my sign-off is to say a prayer and then uh, you know, end the show, but... Uh, I hope that you have all had a good Christmas, a good Hanukkah, or whatever else that you may or may not observe during this season. And I, you know, Lakea says there is going to be a fantastic new year, 2022. So put your thoughts and efforts into that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I want to say a quick prayer, and then we'll take care of this, uh, Call this uh, one in the books. Dear God in heaven, thank you for today. Thank you for the show. Thank you for all the people that had called in. Bless those that are in need, that are hurting, that are sick, mentally, physically, spiritually. Please, dear God, send your angels of mercy to them. Help them out if it be your will. Bless those folks. Keep them safe from all things that are evil, that are demonic, extraterrestrial, interdimensional, out for the ruin of the souls of man. Please, the blood of Jesus Christ on everyone listening or will listen or participate in this show. God bless those that are hurting, dear God. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Holy cow. Thank you, thank you, thank you for another fine. <laughs> I, I'm actually kind of awestruck at how many people actually participate in this show but uh thank you folks god bless you and i think i'm about done with this thing let me get this uh music queued back up but again sean g at i am dark waters hey kjv what's going on if you want uh, the last word if you want to subscribe or help out the show hit those thumbs up share this show out if you want to donate or tip, but you know I've got a PayPal and uh, a T-shirt store, 
and a cash app in the description. Go down there and look. If that's your, if that's what you feel. Now, yeah, happy New Year to you too, Bonita. And Red Raider, thank you. I pre, I hope that you like that wrench I gave you. You've been such a supporter of the show. But uh, good night, folks. I'll see you Saturday uh, over on our Dark Waters Radio channel, if not earlier. Casual conversations, hey. But uh, glad to see you here, although I'm about ready to sign off. Good night, folks. God bless.